So when you open up Photoshop, um, this is the screen that you'll be brought to. You can see here there's some tutorials that show up, some previous documents show up here, some, some recent documents. Um, over here, you can connect some of your cloud documents here. So Adobe has a cloud-based system where you can kind of save some of your files there. So these are some files that were um, on my iPad, for instance, using um, the iPad version of Photoshop. And you can connect it to other programs. Um, but if you look here, the Create New is what you're probably going to want. And so when you press Create New, this screen should show up. And if you look at the top bar right here, it divides out the kinds of documents that you can use as a starting point here. So there's some presets for photo. And you can see there's this top row right here where my cursor is. But if you look below, there's this view all presets with a plus button below it. So you'll get some more options available there. So there's photo, print, art and illustration, web, mobile, and then finally film and video. Um, and so all these can be really useful to go to here. And so for this demonstration, I'm going to go to print and I'll look at eight and a half by 11. So just a standard piece of paper here. So uh, this is the document I want to do. And if you look over to the right, you can see here the width 8.5 by 11 inches. If you would like, you can change the dimensions from pixel, I'm sorry, from inches to pixels here. And so you can see here the number changed. And so instead of being measured in pixel, sorry, in inches, it's now measured um, 2550 pixels by 3300. And so that's kind of your choice right there. And here you can see you can change the orientation. So right now it's set up as vertical. But if you want it to be set up in landscape, you can press this and the width and height will switch. Under that, we have the resolution, which is 300, which is a pretty nice resolution to work with a lot of the time. Um, 72, uh, it's also referred to as DPI resolution. And um, 300 is kind of the standard, I would say, for film and video a lot of the time. It's 72 DPI. And then if you're working on something that you really want to be able to zoom in on and get some nice resolution out of it, you know, 600 might be a good option. But just keep in mind, it takes up more space on your hard drive, it's harder on your computer, all that stuff. So um, moving on, uh, we've got the color mode. So right now it's set in RGB. And so generally speaking, you're either going to want RGB or CMYK. So RGB is for anything digital. So anything film and video related or anything digital that will be going online, anything like that. CMYK is for print. So um, for this class, we're going to be working in RGB because we're going to be keeping things kind of meant for digital distribution here. But CMYK is kind of the other option you might want at some point. Here, you can choose between 8-bit, 16-bit, and 32-bit. And it just kind of has to deal, deal with the resolution again. I might change this one to 16-bit, but 8-bit's fine here. Um, all in all, I just wanted to describe this section right here, but you can just click on eight and a half by 11, go with the defaults, and you'll be in a great place to start here. So I'll press create. And here we have our document. And so let me just briefly describe this interface here. And this interface that you see right here might look different than on your computer. And so the reason for that is if you look in the top right corner right here there's this little tab and you can rearrange your workspace and customize it which is a really nice feature and it's something that you can find in anything adobe so down the road if you're working in after effects or illustrator there's this there's always going to be the same window option up here where you can customize things so right now it's under the essentials and so i think that'll be a good layout to kind of demonstrate things to you all. But you'll notice if I go to one of these customized ones that I would made before, it switches around a little bit. You see how these icons right here changed. This panel called swatches opened up. So it just, um, it's, it's a nice feature here that you can mess around with. But essentials is what I'm going to show here today. So 
What I'm going to show is just the basic interface, how to get started with a program, and I'm just going to equip you with enough information to get ready for um, the, the, first, the first part of Project 1 here. And we're going to dive way deeper into Photoshop down the road here. So this window right here, we obviously have the document. Um, you can press Z, um, and you'll get this magnifying glass right here with a plus on it, and it allows you to zoom in on things. And with Z on a Macintosh, if you press Option, you'll get a minus right there, and it'll zoom back out. And you'll notice that Z is the shortcut for it, but the tool for it is right here at the bottom, and it's a little magnifying glass. You notice if I hover my mouse over it, it, sh it describes the tool to you. It's a zoom tool. It shows you the shortcut for it, which is super helpful here. Um, and then finally, if you want to learn more about it, you can just click on that, and it gives you this nice little panel here where you can kind of investigate a tool here. So this can be really helpful while you're kind of discovering what all these tools mean right here. Um, another way to zoom in and navigate is, so I showed you how to zoom, but let's just say you zoomed in on a document and you want to look over here. You can press H on your keyboard, and it allows you to kind of move the document around. So I'm holding down H and just doing a normal click. And you'll notice right here that this button right here, the hand tool, is the tool that allows you to, to do that right there. So I'll, I'll zoom out by pressing Z and then Option and zooming that out, back out again. You can also press, just for anyone who's kind of used Photoshop for a while and is pretty used to things, another helpful shortcut here is um, Command and zero. So let's just say you're zoomed way in here, and you want to zoom out and see your whole document again. If you press Command and then zero, it punches the document out to full size right there. And just one last thing in terms of, or two last things I want to say in terms of just kind of zooming in and out and kind of navigating around your document is this the zoom button right here. You can click, and it'll kind of zoom in on the area where you're clicking right there. Um, or you can drag left to right. So I'm dragging my cursor from left to right here to zoom in, and then from right to left to zoom back out. I'll press Command-0 again just to kind of get that right to full size. Um, and then the last thing I want to show in terms of just navigating around a document is up here you might see this navigator window at the top right, and if you don't see it, you can go to Windows and look for Navigator. It's checked right there, but if you click on it, see you see how it was checked, and I clicked on it and it went away? If I go to Windows and then Navigator, it'll pull back up. And so Navigator, I kind of find it to be pretty useful. I use a good amount. So you can use the slider to zoom in and out. And then you have this box here, and you can grab it and kind of zoom around the whole document and kind of move your camera to where you want it to go. And you can either grab the slider or press these mountains here to zoom in or press the small mountain to zoom out and it shows you the percentage right here. So we're at 50%, 33% to kind of see the whole document right there. And so this can be a lot of useful ways to get around a document here. Um, we're going to go into this later, but here we have character and paragraph. So if you want to add text into your document, this is kind of a control panel for that. Down here in the bottom right, so this is a super important section right here. So this is layers, and layers is pretty fundamental to the heart of how to work with Photoshop. So we're going to go over that here, but first, before I can really show it, I need to introduce you to the paintbrush so that we can have something on this document to be messing around with. So um, the brush tool, which is the shortcut is B right here, is, and I'm using a stylus right now, what you would think, just a normal brush tool. And if you look at the top, we have some controls here that we can go into. And we're going to dive into that later here. Um, I don't want to dive too deep into this because we're gonna we're gonna do a lot of stuff on this down the road, but I just kind of want to 
introduce you to the kind of basic concept is so that's the brush tool there's a lot of things we can do to kind of customize the brushes and get really deep into it here so when i drew that it showed up on the only layer that we have which is the background layer and if i click this this eye mark right here oh and it's locked right now so let me unlock it see there was like a little lock icon right here and so i was making it so i couldn't adjust anything here or it seemed like it was um so just keep an eye out for that but so when i click that eye you see how this checkerboard shows up so the checkerboard is Photoshop's way, and really most programs' ways, of telling you that there's nothing there. So it's just a transparent layer um, that we're seeing through right now. The background layer, usually as a default, starts out as white, and so we kind of drew right on top of that. I'm going to edit undo uh, by pressing Command Z a few times just to kind of get back to where we are kind of starting off with a blank document. And generally speaking, I don't like to draw right on the background layer. What I like to do, and it kind of depends on the project, is I like to create a new layer to draw on top of. And you create a new layer by going right here where my cursor is, and it's this plus button. So if you click on that, we have a new layer. And so now, if I draw on it, if I turn off this eyeball, we still have that background layer there. And so um, this can be a really helpful way of managing your files and doing some really complicated things and just being able to try out different ideas in Photoshop and doing what I, what I call working non-destructively. And that's just to say that working non-destructively means that you do an action that doesn't um, lock you in a corner. You know, if I don't like this drawing, bam, it's gone. You know, but I still have it there if I need it. Um, so this eye icon right here is how you turn on and off the visibility. If I want to change the name of this layer, what you do is just double click on it right here. And I'll just call this drawing one. And it's a really good habit um, to get into is to name your layers. It's, um, because most of the time you're going to be working with a ton of layers and it can get really out of control really quickly if you just keep everything untitled here. So um, that's how you kind of create a new layer right there is you press this plus button right here. If I'll press it again just to create a new bank blank layer. Something else you can do is if you press shift and select both of them right here and click this folder button, we now have a group. And... A group is a way that you can just bundle a bunch of layers together right here and turn them on and off all at the same time. So I'm just going to edit undo just to kind of get back to where I was. And again, I edit undo by pressing command Z. Um, so I have this layer right here. And sorry, I'm a little sick right now. Um, so uh, I might be losing my voice a little bit. Um, so we have this, this drawing layer here. And let's say that instead of creating a new layer, this blank, I want to duplicate this layer. So I want this drawing, I want two of them. So what you do here is hover your mouse on top of this layer right here. And you can right click and you'll get this, this option right here. So again, I just hover my mouse on top of the layer I'm not, not pressing anything, just hovering it, right click. And then right here, you'll see you have this duplicate layer option right here. So I can press duplicate layer. And then this will show up. And um, we have a few options right here. Um, and I use this a lot. So coming forward in future um, projects here, or for future examples here. So um you can name the layer right here so right now it's going to show up as drawing one copy and then right here is the destination so as it stands it's going to just create a duplicate layer within our project right now or our document but you can also duplicate it into another document that you have open or you can put it um, as its own new document so
I'm going to just keep this in the same document and press OK. So now we have a copy of it. And so let's say we have a copy and we can't really tell there's a copy because it duplicated right on top of itself. And I want to move it around and reposition it. So to reposition it, if you see where my cursor is right here, we've got the move tool. And the move tool, when you grab it, lets you move something around. Typically what I like to do, and I just press edit undo just to kind of get back to where I was. What I like to do is there's a shortcut I use a lot, which is command and T. So that's command and T. And what command and T allows you to do, and my computer's being a little glitchy, this might happen to you. You see how that box didn't show up before? Let me just try this again, just to kind of show, show you what's going on. Um, so the command and T is a free transform. So the way you get to it is you make sure that the layer you want to adjust is selected and you can press command and T or you can go to up to edit and then free transform right here. And you can see the shortcuts written right to the right of it. And what free transform allows you to do. And on this computer, it might happen to you where there's supposed to be a box that shows up around the layer that's not happening right now. So what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to zoom out a little bit and now it's going to show up. I think it's just a slight glitch right there. And so what this allows you to do is you can move it. You can also, I'm going to turn off the layer below it. It also allows you to, um, so you can move it. And so the way I'm doing that is I'm just grabbing it by the center and moving it around there. If I want to scale it and I want to scale it uniformly, all I have to do is just hover my cursor right where it is right here over the corner so that the um, you get those diagonal arrows and it'll scale it and it'll stay in proportion as you scale it. And if you want to scale it so it's out of proportion, just hold down shift and you can change the proportions of it here. Same goes for here. So I'm scaling and I'm not pressing shift right now, so it's scaling it uniformly. But if I hold shift, it'll squish it vertically. Same thing here, not holding shift right now. And it's uniform. If I hold shift, it'll squish it left and right. So I'll just press edit undo to bring it back to where it was. And so this is kind of how you reposition um, an image or a drawing in your file right here. And so when I'm done, I'll just press the move tool just to kind of get out of that. And so now we have two copies of that drawing right there. Um, so uh, next up on things I want to show, on the next lesson, we're going to dive deeper into some some of these tools, and I'm just going to introduce. I'm going to bring these to your attention kind of more and more over time. So don't you know stress too much that I haven't, you know, that I'm not going to get to all of them all at once right here. I just kind of want to equip you with the basics for anyone who's rusty with Photoshop or just needs um, an introduction to it here. So. Continuing with the brush tool, I'm going to make a new layer here, and I'm just going to press the plus button right there to make a new layer. Um, you can see here, I'll just call this drawing too, that when I draw right now, and I'll press B, that's the shortcut for the brush tool, it shows up as black right there. And if I have this black color and this white color equipped, and so the white color is kind of the background color, the secondary color, and if I want to switch them, I can just press those arrows and they switch back and forth. You see I was clicking back and forth there as I click. So let's say I want um, a black brush, but I want a blue brush. All I need to do is I just need to click on this white right here, and then this menu will come up, come up which is the color picker. And again, we're going to dive deeper into this, but I just want to show the absolute basics of Photoshop right now, just so that we can kind of um, get started. So right here, we have this 
kind of map right here. And so the color that's selected is red, and you can tell it's red by this arrow that's right there. And then as I drag it, you can see it's going to yellow, and to green, to blue, to purple, back to red again here. And then in this corner we have white. This color we have a totally saturated red. So if you want kind of a pink color, you know, you just kind of find the, the difference there between white and red. If you want a gray, you drag your cursor to this area. If you want a desaturated black, it's this corner right here. If you want a more saturated dark color, dark red, you can go to this area right here. So you just drag your cursor, and you can see here this is the selected color. And you can kind of change the, the hue and saturation here, um, as well as the brightness um, all within this box right here, and kind of adjusting this as well. So I think I said we're going to go with a blue right here, and I'll just press OK. And so now my brush will show up as blue. If I click this arrow to switch these, it'll go back to a black brush again. And so last thing I want to show for just this quick lesson here, just kind of getting us started, um, is uh, we have, let's just say that we have another document that I want to duplicate this drawing I just made into here. So you see how the untitled document shows up here in the top left. So if I want to create a, another document, I just go to File, New, up at the top right there. So File, New to create a new document. And we'll get this familiar window that I showed at the beginning of class here. So let's just say instead of this is my recent items that show up, remember we can kind of go to these different genres of presets here at the top. So 8.5 by 11 is what I was just using. Let's just say I want to take that and put it into an HDTV format for television. So I'll just pre press Create right here. And it creates this new document. So Untitled 2 is what shows up. And so I can just tab between the two documents right here, which is really nice. And if I want to duplicate this drawing, into this blank document right here. I just make sure I'm on this document. I'm hovering my cursor over the layer that has the drawing on it. I right click and then press duplicate layer just like we did before when we we're duplicating layers. Um, so I right click and duplicate layers. And then under destination, I'll just move it to that untitled two document that we just made. Oops. And press OK. And now that drawing is over here on that new document. And I can just use the Move tool to reposition it. But also remember, if you want to scale it, you can go to Edit, uh, Free Transform, which is Command-T. Or underneath that, you can go to Transform, and then you can just kind of keep it simple with Scale, Rotate, and all that stuff. But I like Free Transform because you can do everything in one place here. So I can scale it. And remember, if I just grab it and drag it, it'll stay uniform. So no need for shift unless I want to change the proportions of things. Um, one thing I forgot to mention is that if you hover your cursor right there, do you see how my cursor is in this upper right corner zone above where that layer is? The arrow changes to a little um, pointing left, pointing down kind of cursor. And so if I just click and drag it, I can rotate the document now. So that's kind of how you can rotate a layer. I'm sorry, not rotate the document, rotate the layer right there. And you'll notice here, if you keep your eye up here, this kind of shows you the degrees it'll rotate. So you can also, if I just want to rotate it 90 degrees, I can just go up here, type in 90, and we got it. Um, so uh, that's just kind of the basics, the absolute basics of, or if you remember what we went over, I showed you the zoom button to zoom in on a document. I showed you if you press H, which is the zoom button's right there, Z. The H button, H, 
so sorry, the hand button H right above it. You can pan around the document while it's zoomed in. And notice that as I'm looking around here, this red box is moving around so I can see where I'm zoomed in on. And also this navigator view lets me kind of see the document as a whole as I'm working on a detailed area here. And so I can just, I can also grab up here to move, pan around or zoom in further. And you can see with a Photoshop document, this is starting to break up because this is a raster image. So it's constructed out of pixels rather than vectors. So as I zoom in, it'll start to pixelate. In Illustrator, that won't happen. In Illustrator, when you zoom in, it won't pixelate like that. So to zoom back out of the document, I can just grab the slider and pull it out right there, and it'll come back to um, be zoomed out. Or you can pre press Command and 0, and it'll punch back out to the, the edge there. Uh, next up, I showed you how to use the brush tool, which is B. We're going to go way deeper into the brush tool. I just wanted to show you the absolute basics here, um, where you can draw in right there. If you have um, a Wacom tablet with an eraser on it, you can just flip your pen around and get eraser. You can erase with that side of it. You don't need to click any buttons. Um, if you're using another kind of tablet, though, you, if you want to erase, you just press this button right here. and That'll give you the eraser tool. Again, going to go way deeper into that down the road here. Um, and finally, to review, we have the layers, which I showed. Remember, you create a new layer here by pressing this button right here. Um, or you could duplicate a layer by right-clicking on a layer and then going to Duplicate Layer right there. And... Um, to, to kind of cap off this demonstration, what I want to show now is how to save a document. So to save a document in Photoshop, what you want to do is just go to File, Save As, rather than Save. So File, Save As. And I'm just going to save this demonstration on my desktop right here. So I'll just, up at the top, I'll just call it Demo. Oh, whoops. Sorry, my keyboard slipped there. I'm going to do this again. So file, save as, and I'll name it demo1. Um, your documents, uh, a PSD is a really good file to save as, so that's the fo uh, Photoshop's native file type. And when you save a Photoshop, it saves everything uncompressed, so you're not losing any resolution or anything like that. And it also saves all of your layer information over here. So if you save something as a PSD, um, when you go back to open it up again later, everything's going to be there, and you're going to be able to adjust it however you like. So um, I'll press Save here, but you'll notice that there's some other options right here. Just most of the time, Photoshop's what you're going to want here, though. So I can, I'm going to go over, and over these other file types later, but Photoshop is a really good kind of document for you to work off of here. Uh, you'll notice that to the right here, you can also save a copy. And we're going to do this a fair amount here. So I'm just going to, um, before I show you that though, I'm just going to press save. And this is okay. So just press okay. And so now, if we look here, that Photoshop document is saved right there. And that'll be a fully editable um, document right there. But let's just say you want to save this as a JPEG, which is going to come up a lot. That's where that file save as a copy comes up. So if you go to file um, save as, you'll notice that save a copy is an option right there. And under the format, remember before it was just Photoshop, TIFF, and PDF, and maybe one other one. So now when I choose format, we get all these options right here and JPEG is on that list. And so these are a bunch of compressed file types that are good if you want to share the document with me over email, for instance, or if you want to upload it to the internet, anything like that. Um, these um, flattened compressed documents are going to be a better way to go than a Photoshop document. Because anyone who doesn't have Photoshop loaded on their computer uh, won't be able to open that Photoshop document. So 
you can just save it as a JPEG, and you see that file type name changed up here. And I'll just press save. When you save a JPEG, there is this slider that shows up. And I just always keep the slider up all the way. Um, but we have this, it's the quality slider, is what they call it. And so if you're trying to get the file type to be really small, if it's not fitting into an email, something like that, you can just drag the slider and it'll make the, the, the end result file a smaller size on your computer. So I'll just press OK. And so now I have that demo one, which is the Photoshop file. So if I open that in Photoshop, it would be fully editable. Then I have the demo one copy, which is a JPEG version. So everything's flattened out here in this version.